Back in Christmas 2018, I uploaded a video about Twisted Metal Harbor City, the cancelled sequel to Twisted Metal Black, released in 2001. If you haven't watched it, then I highly recommend that you do. There's a link in the description or the top right corner of the screen. To recap, I talked briefly about Twisted Metal Black, head on, and then Lost, which contained the remnants of what was Harbor City. I also talked about Harbor City itself, questioning on how and why it got cancelled, looked at some screenshots, and at speculations plus theories. Before I made that video, there are others who tackle on Harbor City, but not of the main game though, but the infamous urban legend itself about some plane crash killing six supposed developers. Also, spoilers! It's not cancelled because of the plane crash. That part's a complete hoax. So to break the mold, I made the video properly, which I did plan on making this for a long time. Long after the video was uploaded, there are some new Twisted Metal related events being surfaced, and no one, apart from the Twisted Metal community, even noticed. And even more recent events, I decided to get off this funk and get back to it. So once again, ladies, gents, trans people, lost media, and Hot Wheels enthusiasts, welcome back to Twisted Metal. The black sequel that never was. Part 2. I'll take my consensus that some interest was rekindled. Yeah, no one but a hardcore feel are into Twisted Metal nowadays. But there are some interesting events. Seems like out of the blue, people started making videos about Twisted Metal again. Mainly a retrospective like Daniel Ibertson's Complete History video and Genry Perez's three-part history featuring Dave Jaffe himself. Not to mention, a Twisted Metal TV show is in the works. But that's yet to be seen. You know, apart from all of this coronavirus crap going on all 2020. Oof. Maybe. Maybe it's just pure coincidence, and I made the video at the right place at the right time. Or the algorithm. God bless. On that same video, I've said that in some alternate universe that we will have Harbor City in its complete glory. Well, on June 13th, 2019, Twisted Metal history was made when an early prototype of Harbor City was dumped to the public. This here is the real deal. This is a very, very early build of Harbor City, the same-ish build shown by Dark Scorpius 8 years ago. The build, dubbed Build 63, was dumped by the Cult of Osiris from a damaged hard drive in a dev kit. This build in particular was last edited in around September 2003, meaning that this is barely started from the first 6 months of development. Of course that this is an unfinished prototype, but there are some major problems. Most notably, it's very easy for the game to crash by simply selecting your car and pick a map. The way around this hurdle was to make a split screen match from Dev Shell, kill your opponent, then pick the car in Arena in full screen. Don't forget to use a safe state beforehand. I was planning on making a video about this in 2019, but I hold it back as this is a very janky build, and there's not much material to work with, sadly. You'll respond with, White. Not enough material. Well, yeah, but this is just a modified version of Twisted Metal Black, and the arenas shown by Dark Scorpius are all playable, except the airport, which doesn't exist in the files. The only thing outside of that video was tinkering with the tweak menu, and the best part was in the mall level, which is not this Tri Vision billboard advertising dildos, but this never before seen alleyway. Another thing is that there's some new elements that was implemented early on like damage info which was seen in Head On. Also, more evidence that Harbor City became Head On was more apparent, when there's file names and particle effects related to Egypt and Paris. Both levels returned in Head On. I know there's a later and more complete build, likely compiled somewhere in 2004 or 2006, which is around 75% complete. I mean, this can't be the only build to be known, that's for sure. 
Only Scott Campbell and crew knows that there exists a later build. There are screenshots that showed you all earlier that this took place further in development, before it was stripped down for levels in Twisted Lost. Having an open world environment in a car combat game before open world and battle royale games are the norm does sound intriguing, and allegedly takes you around 10 minutes to get on one end of the world to the other. Hell, if the later Harbor City build was dumped by someone from the Less Broken Dev Kit, that will be revolutionary. Well, on Christmas Eve 2020, I think my wish was granted. <laughs> So you be asking, yo, what the hell's this? And I answer, a later build of Harvest City, dated in October 2006. During the time of writing, the ROM for this isn't dumped, but there's some things to cover, like you can play this without jumping through hoops, and have working AI. Not only that, check this. Since I don't have my hands on the late prototype, the least I can do is just look at some screenshots provided by the well-known Twisted Metal enthusiast Hilrahi, the same guy who detailed Harbor City's cancellation from the previous video, which I was too skeptical to add. Also the OP of this newfound footage. Some of these screenshots that I showed you likely took place between the events of the early prototype and the one shown. And now look at this. In Harbor City, there are situations where you can go on foot as either Sweet Tooth or Preacher. As I was told in the previous video, Preacher on foot wasn't made, according to several screenshots in Jaffe himself. So here's some more images of Sweet Tooth on foot. Do you see those blocks that was done by a six-year-old that resembles a gun? Bang bang kiddos, the guns work. Next, here's a new thing. Here's this screenshot with him in some ambulance that vaguely resembles his truck. What's the story here? Bam. He Trojan horsed his way into some fire department or warehouse. Now this raises more questions. Another thing is that a plethora of screenshots show Sweet Tooth's vehicle is the same one used in Head On, meaning that the Harbor City vehicles were likely carried over to the PSP game that we ended up getting. Then again, there's some screenshots where you'll find Sweet Tooth's black design, and one of the screenshots show the head-on version of Spectre. Remember that stock car driven by a headless person from Twisted Lost? Well, there's a little more story to this. No, not in-game lore, but development lore. This vehicle existed before Lost, and according to the newfound footage, it was blue at one point. It's standard trivia if you ever played the Sweet Tour mode in Head On Extra Twisted Edition. So, why is it called 12 Pack? And why was it driven by a headless person? Now, funny thing about making a Twisted Metal game is that the vehicles were done first, and then they make the drivers. If a Twisted Metal game was made in today's society, it would be the other way around. Then again, we almost get a fat lady in a gimp suit holding fetuses in black. But at least our eyes are spared from that. Whew. So before talking about the locations, it's probably time to answer a question nobody asked, is how would they implement the entire city without load screens? The key selling point to this game was that it's going to be this seamless world that ties the entire city together, with the use of highway systems and the likes. Well this is a loading screen in disguise just to make this long enough for the fastest cars so the entire level loads properly. This method isn't new, surprisingly. Other games had this similar idea, like Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, Ratchet and & Clank, and even the first Spiral of the Dragon games. It's a cheeky move, but probably sacrifices the Twisted Metal Black intermission text in the process. Just a thought. Now back on topic. In the previous video, I correctly predicted one location in particular. I may also think that you could get inside the airport to do some damage perhaps, but who knows. The airport was real. So what about the other places? 
There's more screenshots of locations, but I want to look at one place which is in the prototype, known as S-Center. I thought this was some test level based around the Seattle Center, but this is actually part of the city, since these were worked on, complete with both football stadium and basketball court. Here's some more that are new and not shown. Does anyone remember the suburban terror from Lost? Well, this is what it looks like when it wasn't stripped down. And now, something that's never been shown before. One I like to call the outskirts. According to its atmosphere, it looks a little spooky and features this cathedral. This could be the one place where Sweet Tooth and Preacher or somebody else battle it out as some final boss fight or whatnot. So where does this place link to? Luckily, there's an answer. In this screenshot, there's some tracks. Now, where in Harbor City had tracks? The rail yard has them, but these don't look like they're from a train because these are much curvier. And this must be some sort of roller coaster. From the carnival. To prove this, in Twisted Metal Lost, the roller coaster had one of its paths blocking off somewhere. But that path, believe it or not, might be an exit. Since this big leak of screenshots, there's even more scenarios where everyone's favorite killer clown could run around. This one I showed you earlier is likely part of the asylum that we never get to explore. These two here could be part of a strip club, but this is definitely a biker bar in my opinion. The next piece is the familiar cathedral interior shown on the last video, but in a different camera angle. Note that there's a clone of Sweet Tooth in the background. The next one is new, but it's weird. This looks like some nightclub, but it resembles a prison of some sorts. The prison could be abandoned and someone turned into her own nightclub, but who knows. The last one is a notable cutscene from the Sweet Tour mode, but this ugly interlaced screenshot would suggest this might be some sort of QTE where you have to escape this cage. Hang on a second, let me deinterlace it. That's better. Since I had to rewrite the original script at late Christmas Eve to show you all the newfound footage, I had to rewrite this bit again because fellow TMA member Dark Scorpius revealed some new footage on New Year's, which is an hour long complete with sound. Now let's look at those. We could see that we have a new title screen and main menu, resembling a bit of Twisted Lost. Game suggests that this will have an online mode implemented instead of being on a separate disc. The offline modes, story, challenge, endurance, split screen are there, and there's a new mode, mission. A curious question, what is mission mode? Well, if I were a guessing man, mission mode suggests that this is going to be an all new special campaign with the on foot scenarios, meaning that you can have your overweight, psychotic, fiery headed clown power fantasy at your leisure. On the character's select screen, there's no display of the vehicles, drivers, or locations, just like in Build 63. But now the game used their official names. Loading up the levels, the sound design is kinda different. The HUD remains the same, apart from the text, which resembles the same font as Lost. There's no music in the footage, so I asked him if there was such a thing. He responded, No. No, no, no. Well, not quite. Another TMA member who was trying to get Harbor City working told me. There are additional tracks present in the files. Not sure what the intention of said tracks were. Some are clearly tests, some are weird ambience, some appear to be from head on, etc. But it does feature more tracks in terms of sheer number of files. Looking at the first piece of new footage, the player chose 12 pack and played in the ghetto. The gameplay here shows the place which is more detailed than Lost. It has working AI, there's traffic cars roaming around, pickups, and the tweak menu works. In the tweak menu, there's some things that will keep you in interest, like helicopters and environmental weapons. The Whirly Bird suggests that the helicopter holding pickups will return, and environmental weapons are a thing. The freeways are not removed like in Lost, but the highway is blocked off. That's probably intentional due to the fact he's playing a single match. But should there be a tunnel there? The rest of this footage was him messing around with the camera. The new footage by Dark Scorpius features some familiar faces like Sweet Tooth, Mr. Grimm, Brimstone, and all the other playable vehicles retaining their black designs. 
Roka had a cleaner look. Outlaw and Thumper resembled their head-on designs, and Axel lacked a secondary special. New vehicles include Old Pickup, which could be a new driver, or replacing Warhog or Thumper according to the mounted gun, which I believe it's a flamethrower. Not only that, the biggest surprise here is the return of Pit Viper, who was absent since the very first game. The only hint that she was ever going to return beforehand was in the art book included in Head-On Extra Twisted Edition, featuring a Doom Buggy that doesn't resemble Grasshopper at all. The only other instance of old pickup existed before this build was part of the factoids in Sweet Tour mode, talking about the car designs in black. The levels too are still unfinished, but they're more complete, more interactive, and quite expensive. There's docks, the ghetto, downtown, rail yard, shipyard, estate, harbor 1, harbor 2, freeway, suburbs, stadium, S center, and gone. Sadly, the footage here only shows half of those, but the reason was written in the video's description. They couldn't get these levels, the modes, or even some of the characters to load, according to Dark Scorpius. He also stated that the game can also crash if you ever killed someone, or head into a place where you're not supposed to, hence the short play session. This also means that there's no on-foot Sweet Tooth footage, of which is a crying shame. Besides that, here's some of the bullet points from the new footage. The context of destroying the big skyscrapers in downtown is that you can blow up tall gas towers. Yes, there are several of these to destroy. You can decimate planes in the airport, but the destroyed textures aren't made. S-Center is revealed to be the carnival level, meaning that Carnival Darkness and Twisted Lost only used around a quarter of this entire section. The mall's interior is more finished, different store signs and such. The outside area is yet to be seen, but as I mentioned before, the game crashes if you're going to a place where you're not supposed to. Story mode cannot be beaten as there's no transitional area loaded at all. In fact, all levels lack a transitional area. Speaking of story mode, it gives you a rundown of where to go next after defeating a number of enemies with this green box on the radar. You can simply stock up some health and weapons before entering the next section of town. Some of the vehicles lacked a special weapon, and in its place was a Spectre missile. Skill missiles would return in Harbor City, but only Zoomy missiles are shown. So yeah, it's pretty cool that the game actually exists and not destroyed. In the meantime, we just have to wait it out and hopefully that prototype will be dumped, and maybe playable on emulators. One thing I do not encourage is harassment, especially the ones who had the copy of Twisted Metal Harbor City. Since this channel isn't popular as Guru Larry, Blame It On Jorge, Rebel Taxi and more, the view count may grow over time, but I wouldn't bet my Hot Wheels collection if this goes viral. This is the part we end things for now, and let's face the facts. There's a huge plethora of video games, movies, TV shows, and other things like Harbor City that will never get to see the light of day, and is likely still out there. I mean, we can name plenty such as 12 Tales Conquer 64, the 2001 version of Duke Nukem Forever, Big Bug Man, the uncensored Fist of the North Star movie, the GTA 3 betas, and Rayman 4. It's possibly somewhere in a warehouse, in the vaults of some company, Area 51, or in someone's attic. Since the Nintendo Giga Leak, there's some more games that was never finished and never mentioned. So what other secrets lies in stores? I hate the stigma of not having nice things, but there's probably a reason why we can't have said nice things, and we have to get used to it. That's the industry for ya. Tune in next time where I look into one of the more intriguing prototypes done recently, that eventually became a rockstar staple. My name's Mace 2.0, and I'll see you later.